I did, I partnered with a photographer, she's now in South Africa, and I had a, a nude shoot, and the pictures were featured in galleries. I struggled actually to, to see myself in a full length mirror for a really long time, oh. and I hated myself in a mirror. There's a place I went for an interview, and then they asked me, can you climb stairs? And I looked at them, and an interesting, oh, the person who was asking me was a fat old man. Like he was also fat, and on top of being, at least I'm fat and young, he was fat and old. But someone who went as far as how is sex, and I'm like, really on camera? You, you thought this they, through? They want you to explain it. I'm like, on camera? Thank you for joining us once again. My name is Carlton Skovia Nakamia. This is another episode of Her Story. Today's topic is quite very interesting, quite important and sensitive. Um, she's one of the few people I meet and they're very proud of their size. Not so. Even when you're online, I saw a tweet she read one time and she was like, oh, this is my size, you know. You yeah. actually call yourself my size. Size young, yeah. size young meaning my size. <laughs> So this is this is pride, you know. Mm -hmm. It's it's having self confidence. Very interesting. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank How you are so you doing? Much. I'm I'm feeling cold too. <laughs> <laughs> we should tell Javas to bring a cup of tea or what. Yeah, but I'm fine. I saw mushroom soup. And I was like, yay! <laughs> <laughs> Javas should give us a mushroom soup. You had an art exhibition last time, but it was centering on um, human rights. Yes. What was the secret behind? Okay, so I work with um, <clears throat> with a number of, of, of spaces, but I work with um, East African visual artists, and um, our aim is to tell stories of um, marginalized communities, so people would understand <clears throat> and people better. And so we're running a program called Human Rights Are Universal where in this program we are getting all human rights artists, poets, visual art, for any cause, children, maternal health, the climate, whatever is, whatever cause it is that you feel like is an issue. Human yes, and we're trying to get them into the same space, first of all, to appreciate each other's causes, but also trying to uh, break into the space, like civil space, help them make some money. You know, some people would not be able to know that they're you can do advocacy through art as well. So there's so many people oh. doing so many things. And so art is a universal language. So we're trying to pair these, advocates, these um, activists with artists so that they could match together and reach wider audiences. So that's what we're trying to do. That was an inaugural exhibition. And um, we partnered with, the, with Goethe Zentrum, which is the Uganda German Culture Center. And that's where it was. And yeah, so it's going to be running over and over. Uh, we still have some of the artists work at our office in Mengo because some people are saying the exhibition is too short, but also some, these artists don't have where to exhibit from, they do gig work. Mm. So, but it would be nice for you to get a call and be, uh, how can I find your work? Oh no, you go to this office, it's, it's, it's hanging there. So yeah, that's what we're trying to do, just break into the space of human rights but with art. For me, if somebody tells me you're tiny, it, it, it somehow offends me. Okay. If you tell me I'm tiny, I don't know, but it somehow offends me. But on your shirt, you even have too fat, too furious. <laughs> yeah. And on your Twitter account, you have size young, my size. Mm -hmm. what, what's all this? <coughs> so, um, I'll tell this, I'll, I'll just take you a bit behind to when I was born. It's a very, I know it's, it's a bit far, but it's important. So I was born 4.5 kilograms. So if any, it's not, <laughs> babies are between 3, 3.5, so from 4.5 to upwards, it's a kind of, a, it's a heavy baby. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's normal, but you're heavy. Yeah. So usually it's for diabetic moms and uh, people, that, the, the certain things that make your child. But my mother was none of those things. <clears throat> and so growing up, and um, I thank God that I come from a, a, a place that actually has fat people. So growing up, until I was like nine, I didn't see a problem with being fat. Because okay. even the school that I went to, mm, by that time when we were younger, they were calling fat kids healthy kids. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Mm, and you see a fat kid, you're like, this kid is healthy. I don't know when now. Mm -hmm. When you grow up, it switches. When you're fat, you're no longer healthy. Or yeah. <laughs> it's, so, and um, 
so for me it was a it was a journey to coming to understand that wait so other people are actually not okay with me looking like this yeah and so when you say things like when you're tiny when you're or you're fat or the term size younger i'm a poet that's my form of art i'm a poet yeah and so poetry is play with words right yeah, yeah. so for me they're words you give them power you strip power from them are you not small is grass green is grass I green <laughs> i am small <laughs> is grass green that's obvious it green. it's a so if you met the grass you wouldn't say oh that grass that's not yellow but it's not brown but it's green right yeah. so if we if we learn that these words are description there's nothing else so if you if you call me tall i am tall yeah. and i am fat um big it's not going to you're describing me if you're intending it to harm it's, I, I feel it's unfortunate because it's a description the same way I'm dark I'm the people that are brown it's a description if you met me and they tell you so what did she look like you said she was fat she was tall dark. she was chocolate you know yeah. why how come I'm not angry that you're not calling me chocolate you know so <laughs> words are words mm. they're adjectives they use them to describe and so if people are using them to harm it's unfortunate it, it doesn't bother you it, it sh sometimes I'll be honest and um and say that I've not always been like this yeah I've not always been um this okay it's, it's people say oh my god you're so confident I don't know if I am but I've not always been um this vocal and this you telling me camera I'd be like if this if this interview cannot be on, on audio I'm sorry like oh, yeah you can't do it but because remember the first interview I ever did that was like really out there was in campus B when I sit at campus and it was when I just started the Saizi Yange campaign. And Saizi Yange is all about... <clears throat> so for me, if you're a woman in Uganda, you've been called Saizi Yange at some point. It's uh, usually called, used by border men. No? And for me, my oh, role... Oh, that one is my size. My size. Yes. Yeah. So I love to get the power away from the word that's aiming to hurt. Do you know how many people have called me Saizi Yange? And when I've turned and I'm wearing my merchandise, I make merchandise. I make sweatshirts, I make shirts, I make... And I'm wearing my merchandise. And they just laugh. They're like... It's, it's, it's embarrassing because I'm already calling myself size young. So if you're intending to harm me by calling me size young, you, it's, it's, it's hilarious. I beat you to it. Yeah. And so I've not always been like that. But you realize that in this life, how much of your life are you going to live because of other people? To what extent? How much power are you going to give other people? To harm you. So not just to harm you, but to dictate what you wear, what, how you move, what you eat. Like people don't even know what I eat, but someone will pass by me and assume that I, they know everything that I have in a meal. And they don't. What if I'm on a country my diet and it's just not working? Like you don't know someone, you just see this frame, but you can't know. Have you ever tried <laughs> dieting? You guys, I'm a diet industry. I think I, I should write a book about dieting. Yeah. Really, I should. Because even someone I don't know, you see, before we leave this place, mm. three people would have approached me to tell me about these diets that they are working on and these companies that they come from and these amazing and that, products. That, that, that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wh what's your approach normally? To what's what? Your reaction? What's your reaction towards people who are like, oh, I have this kind of diet, it can help you <laughs> cut down the size, it can help you here and there? That's a funny question. What actually helped me with that was, I used to have dreadlocks, natural dreadlocks, right? So when I would move, the little repair women, let me do your repair. And I'm like, the person who plated my hair is not yet dead. So you are, if I have this hair, it means I did it from somewhere. So it's the same approach. Like, <clears throat> if you're seeing me and you see that there's a, you're the, you've seen me at this age, you've seen me today. So you don't think someone else saw me yesterday or the day before or last week. So at some point, <clears throat> you should, I, I'd be like, you know what, somebody beat you to it. I'm already following someone else's dad. But if it doesn't work, I'll, I'll reach out. Thank you. Oh. I'm not rude because for them in their minds, you know, in this life, everything is about intention. I can tell someone who is coming to me genuinely yeah. with positive intentions. And I can tell someone who is, whose whole aim is to be mean, to be little, to pull me down. Yes. So I can tell and the approaches are usually different. Yeah. Have you ever been employed anywhere? Yes, I've, I'm employed. I'm currently employed. And, but I understand your question. There's a place I went for for an interview and then they asked me, can you climb stairs? And I looked at them. I, I, 
an interest in the person oh, who was asking me was a fat old man. Like he was also fat and on top of being, at least I'm fat and young, he was fat and old. And he was asking me, so can you climb stairs? Okay, I'm not fat shaming him or age shaming him. I'm that just was saying. The interview. Yes, you know, we had the interview. I answered all these questions. So was that part of the interview? Yes, what's in the interview? He's like, so um, can you go up the stairs? I think that's why I didn't get that job because I told him, what do you think? Is your office on the ground floor? Am I, am I not here? Oh. And I think he wasn't amused with my response. Mm. I, I get employed, but I, um, I do, what do they call it, without sounding rude. Mm, I do brain work. Okay. So I'm not, no, I do not think I can get a job in a factory. I don't think they would hire me. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody looking for to carry, for to carry things would hire me. But <laughs> <laughs> all, my, all throughout my employment experience, I've done human rights work. And so because I've done human rights work, I work with people who understand body autonomy and um, you know what it means for someone to take control of their body and also to just be kind. Recently I was doing some work with children and there this now that you know when we were younger information was not that it wasn't that much available, available. yeah mm -hmm. but now children that are growing up now so I went to pick up someone from school and there was a child I met at the, the school has a pool so this Eight year old that was fatter than everybody else in their class was sitting on the pool and they were crying. So I asked her what's wrong and she said, I cannot swim, people are going to make fun of me. And my heart broke because this child is eight years old and at eight years old she already knows the world hates her. The world sees her as a disgusting thing and she has to change what she looks like. So yes, okay, somehow, yes and no, but a percentage like 20% influence, not like a hundred percent. No. Have you ever tried any, anything to do with diet or to cut down your size or what? So my goal, my goal is not to cut down my size. If it comes as a pro, but my goal in life is to be healthy, to be fit, to, I don't know, to, to live a life free of disease. And if, if somehow that if, if, if I reach a certain point and my weight or how, how much I weigh is, in the line, is it affecting me, then I do put in the work. I do work out, I do <coughs> diet. Yeah. I have tried diets. So many. Right? So yes. I can actually give a whole lecture about diets. Oh, yes. and the old didn't work. It's, it depends on what, that's the thing. We have different things we want out of diets. Yeah, so... Maybe I wasn't looking to lose weight. It's assumed that I'm, I'm seeking to lose weight. What if I'm not seeking to lose weight? And, you know, it's this, people just aimlessly come out and speak. I was fat from when I was a child. Remember in my P3, my mother went pick me from school, and this teacher called her to the side and said, why don't you start giving this child um, tea with warm water? With, no, warm water with lemon. And then... For what? So she's growing fat. So that was at eight years old, as in P3. And somehow it grows and, and it, it grows on to you that you have a problem. So in S1, I was not small. I was actually still fat, but I was diagnosed with ulcers because I stopped eating because I wanted to shrink myself. And I was very sick. Actually, there were severe peptic ulcers. At the point that I was put, I had, to, I had to pick my meals from the nurse's home to make sure that I'm eating. Yes, I had to be supervised to eat food and let me tell you i wasn't shedding a kilogram <laughs> so if somebody people who studied with me if you saw me in s1 you know that i don't look much different from when i was in s1 or like the whole time i was in school eh? mm. and so as my, I, I don't have a problem with people that diet i just the reason why you diet shouldn't be because people are telling you to diet the only way that changing your body works is if you change your body because you love it you started your the my size campaign, mm. size young. Mm. What kind of reaction do you get? I'm surprised. I'm actually getting a lot of love. I have a YouTube channel, just that I've um, I got some issues. The person who was shooting the videos for me and editing them. Okay, the person who shoots the videos is available, but I struggle with, with the video editor. So we've been like on hold. Then you know, life comes in the way, mental health, you go through like a whole long line of I'm taking a break from this, all that. But when I did make the videos, I received a lot of love from the videos. People are, yeah, because it's, uh, I'm, I'm untelling myths and I'm, I'm just 
the other side that people don't see. People just see a fat body, but they don't understand it comes with a mind, it comes with, with like so many things that are attached. Yeah, and so, yeah, the love. The love you received. The love I received, but yo! <laughs> <laughs> what? The, I think the place, I've, the only, the space that has been, that has been um, emotionally tough uh. has been Twitter. Because YouTube is amazing. I, I feel like there's, I've not seen a hate comment on YouTube. Instagram is amazing. Mm. <laughs> I've, I've not received any hate on my personal Facebook. Okay. Yeah. For Twitter? <laughs> it's relevance. You want, you feel the need to speak about everything that you see. You have an opinion. Of whether or not your opinion is going to change anything because I, do, I struggle with these facts I'm not your wife I'm not your sister I'm not your friend I'm not your daughter how is how am I exactly I'm not sitting with you in a taxi I've not asked you to take me on your border border like there's we have wish if the world is small but the world would not be small enough for us to ever interact right I don't see how my weight is a problem for you like I, I, I struggle to understand it people have just just have the I've realized that people want you to have this undying need to have an opinion about everything like and I don't know who has given them that false importance that oh my god you're so important like you thou should speak about this topic like I, I don't know where they get that that importance from but it's, it's, it's really misplaced in most cases they like trolling they have a solution to every problem thank you I realize that people hate what they fear. I keep saying this all the time. Like, you look at me, Carlton, and you're like, God, please, yeah, I do not want to reach that size. And then you're scared of me. So because you're scared of being like me, you hate me. No, I can't. You know, like, people, people's minds, yeah? Okay. But people need to, I'll just say this, I'm not recruiting fat people. Like, I'm not trying to recruit people into fatness. It's not, it's, I'm not doing that business. So I don't see why, why you feel the need to, to be so afraid that I will, like if I, if I show that I'm fat and I'm positive and I'm happy, I'm contagious, somehow someone will catch the fat bug. They don't work like that. Yeah. People hate what they fear. If, if I'm scared of something, I will hate anybody that represents that thing. And because, so I have to make sure it doesn't come into my space. So I speak about it and I'm, I make sure people know that I hate this thing. It's a very, <laughs> a very interesting lecture. <laughs> Uh, I hope people will change. I don't. Why? Um, I'm not actually seeking acceptance. Yeah, because there are certain things that I can't tolerate as a person. Because when you when you say you're running that my size campaign, mm -hmm. size young, mm. it's it's somebody who doesn't understand what you go through. Somebody who doesn't understand the facts you're just telling me. Mm -hmm will continue trolling you. But if you continue that online uh, size young campaign, I think it will change because people will begin to respect that I must respect her space. That's who, the, who she is. I, 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 um, I feel like these differences in, in this, uh, we, we, it's a balance, it's like a yin yang balance, really. Why does a stranger that is living their life online threaten you so much that you feel the need to, like, is it so, is it so scary that I'm happy? I, like, do I threaten your peace? Do I threaten this small box that I should have put beauty in? Do you sell beauty products? Like, what do you sell that, um, that me, the market, is, I'm th that I'm threatening your market? You know, when women started, Women stop wearing bras these days. Yeah. And so if the bra market should come out on it, and, and <laughs> if they start posting those funny sentences, I understand, because yeah. there's a threatened market. Yeah. What market do people who are happy with their lives, how do I affect you? I, I think I don't understand. Mm. I don't get it. And I, all I usually ask people is, you're entitled. Like I said, you're entitled to your preferences. You're entitled to, like you and I could be, since we're having a conversation, yeah. If somebody passed by and wanted to talk about them, I'll tell you. Some, okay, if, if, if I was intrigued in any way, I, it would be okay for me to tell you. But I wouldn't walk up to a total stranger and start things like, excuse me, how dare you exist in this way that I do not agree with. <laughs> me as who? 
<laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, who gives me that authority? Who? So yeah, I just, I, I, like I said, tolerance, not acceptance. Let's just coexist. I'm not seeking for you to, to accept me. I don't expect you to, to find ways to grow fat tomorrow so I can show me you're in solidarity with me. But I'm sick, like tolerance. Let's, let's live together. That's yes. all. So I don't understand why you want all of us to look the same. So it beats me. It, does, it doesn't make sense. It beats me. Mm. And I'm yeah, so happy that we're having this conversation. And we are total opposites of each other. <laughs> 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 One of my favorite friends is a really small person. And shopping with her is so interesting. It's the most consoling thing in the world. Oh. Like we enter a shop, they're too small for me, they're too big for her. We all come up with nothing. <laughs> We all come out with nothing. No, it just happens. We just, it's so interesting. We both come out with nothing. And then even when we're walking on the street, hey, I can manage. And it's very interesting because it's hilarious. Yeah? And when people find us eating food, they're like, eh, she's small, but she can eat. Like, so it's, 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 so it's a very, the di that's what I said, the diversities of human beings are very interesting. And, and so for me, for Saizi Young, it's for anybody that has something that they feel like the world has made them see as wrong, but it's something about themselves. And it's your size and it fits you just right perfectly. Yeah. For clothes, where do you buy them? Another do you thing order? with being <laughs> fat, you guys. Like how everybody's trying to give me that, everybody's trying to dress me. Like I got time, Mama Night Palette took out like everyone. So somehow I I find myself in an influx of clothes. <laughs> we are just a body type. Yeah. So yeah, I buy, what, okay, my shirt size is what, 3XL? Two shirts that are 3XL, are, they're everywhere. Yeah, I've seen them before. The, what, this jacket, where did I get this jacket? I'm just saying, like, there are clothes everywhere. I have clothes from, from Owino, I have clothes from Mr. Price, I have clothes from, like, from all over the world, I have clothes. <laughs> it's, there's no space that, oh my god, but then these days actually they're, they're what, plus size stores, huh? Shane. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, no, I do not struggle finding clothes. And, and when I want something and, the, and my size is not there, I'm going to tailor it. I'll get it made for me, custom made. But most of the questions people usually come up with is, are you dating? Are you. But someone went as far as, how is sex? And I'm like, really, on camera? You've, you've thought this they, through? They want you to explain it. I'm like, on camera, so... I hope you didn't answer them. Of course I didn't. I was so angry, I think I actually left. They didn't air it. But I've done so much work. Actually, I forgot to tell you guys. I did, I partnered with a photographer, she's now in South Africa, and I had a, a nude shoot. And the pictures were featured in galleries, in Rwanda, and here. Nude shoot? Yes. What's that? When you're naked and take pictures of you and they post them. But the pictures were actually on Google, but then my partner got them pulled down. We report, kept reporting them, they were tired of them being there. So my partner kept reporting them until Google pulled them down. But if you Google, there's like one picture. About what? what Just what? Google my name. There are, there, there are the pictures where I'm doing body positivity. I shoot. Wow. So. <laughs> Let's talk about the naked shoot. <laughs> no, we are done. No, we are not done. <laughs> Done. We are done. Okay, what was the motivation? The person was, um, it was different body diversities and, um, and how it's about power, ownership. You know, there's certain people that struggle. I struggled actually to, to see myself in a full length mirror for a really long time. Oh. Yeah. Because of, again, I, was, I hated what I saw because I was conditioned to believe it was ugly. Okay. And so, this, the, the condition you that you're, you're not worth it, your body yes, size is, a, yes, is an I abomination. I have no business, yes, and I hated myself in a mirror. Oh. I Actually, when I'd move with my partner, then would, there were no mirrors in our house. Maybe just enough to brush your teeth, but no. No dressing mirrors? No. But now I have like three mirrors. So you have confidence now? Yeah, I, I love what I, oh, check, that girl is sexy. <laughs> yes. So, so yeah. did that shoot actually it, add some yes. confidence in you? Oh my god, it was the power. I just felt myself letting go and, and you know what, saying to hell with it. And it was beautiful. The power was, was awesome. Where was it? It was at a photographer, a friend who's a photographer, and then they exhibited in 
online and in Rwanda. Yeah. So how many people bought? They are not for sale. Oh. No. Just the, exhibition. Yes. No. You can't buy anything. Just come and look at the work. You look at the work, leave. Yeah, you pay to look at the work, oh. and then you take it in and leave. You could take pictures of the work, but not it was not illegal. But you couldn't take any of the frames home with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was it, it, women. You should take naked pictures of yourself, not for the internet, but just look at yourself, appreciate yourself, find things that you love about yourself for your body. But also that law. You keep them in your phone? This new law speak, uh, helps with anybody that photo posts pictures. It, you don't actually have a, a way to, to, to sue them. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, okay, maybe get an artist. Uh, get, reach out, I have artists. Get an artist to take what to, is the a painting you? of you, like to do a painting, keep it in your house. I don't know, yeah. There's some liberating things that we should do. It liber I, I got a lot of power out of it. And I, I think about every time I'm, I post a picture and I get hate, I'm like, nah. You pull out your naked picture, you look at it. No, know? I don't. I'm like, if I could do the other thing and go through it, I can go through a few men, a few virgins saying nonsense about me on this Twitter app. <laughs> I love your com I love your confidence. Thank you. I love your confidence. There is a lot of pressure to do with cutting weight when it comes to ladies. How far do you want to go with the um, size younger campaign? Um, forever, as far as it can go. Um, currently, I commissioned my struggles. If there's anybody that could volunteer as a video editor, because my friend volunteered as a video shooter, we would have the videos and run the campaign. We are currently selling size young merchandise. We have um, sweatshirts, we have t-shirts. Um, I do a lot of talks like these ones. I do a lot of them for mental health. I've done them in schools, I've done them in women groups, I've done with um, with certain groups of diversities. So the idea of beauty, the, the pressure shouldn't, don't succumb to it. They have, have your, there's no one way to be beautiful. There's no wrong way to have a body. There's no wrong way to live. As long as you're happy about yourself. Mm. Yeah. But I'm not those people that are anti-health. If you're struggling to breathe, if you're struggling with um, different health conditions, please get it checked out. There's exercise that you can do. If they tell you to eat certain things, please do eat them. Don't go and say this fat girl on, on social media told us we can die. The most I will do is RIP if I know that you've died, but keep healthy. Yeah. yeah, that's the most important thing. Be healthy. The whole idea of, of thinness and fatness and whatnot. So do you monitor your weight? No, I hate wearing scales. They're bad energy. Oh, I don't. Okay, for me. It like, can be a shocker. You're not like, a shocker per se, but... It's going, to, it's going to be index. a whole conversation. Thank you. It's going to become a whole conversation. And, and as a fat person, even when you go to the hospital, I could go to the with a broken hand. Yeah? Broken hand. You can see the hand is broken. But the first thing I'll be diagnosed is fat. Like, go doctor, my hand is broken. Have you tried exercise? For a broken hand? <laughs> Do you see? As a, as a, like, it's very, it's, it's an unpleasant experience yeah because you can't sit down and explain to every medical practitioner that you are fine that this is not what it is that you do it's a whole yeah this is a question that that is not supposed to come mm -hmm. but it is a or b okay am i in a relationship <laughs> <laughs> every time someone says that that's what they ask me yeah yes i'm in a very happy relationship okay. yes uh, what was the uniform, but dear. I'm happy for you. Thank you. How easy was it for your partner to understand you? Yes. What did it take your partner to understand you? Oh, that's a difficult question since I'm not my partner. You know the problem with what, the th what trolls do and what bullies do is that they create internalized stigma. I start to stigmatize myself. I start to hate myself. I start to wonder if I start to see you start to see yourself through their lens of your ugly or the some guy who come I never forget this comment. Some guy came and said, Umbuko. So you're from Kenya, they know me, it's clear I'm Ugandan. The um eh, 
Umba uko enda wa gym, kwa gym. And I'm like, so I'm a dog, why? You oh, dog umba, go to umba. gym. Oh, Umba yeah. is dog. Yes. And it, it, then this blogger who came and who went and got my pictures from God knows all the places that he can. It's called Tommy Lee, Uganda, yes. He went and got my pictures from everywhere he could and went and made, put them on his Facebook page and claimed that we are friends. I don't know who this person is. They sent me a screenshot. He's like, uh, my friend is single and searching. What? Yeah. All that thing Galaxy does of posting people's pictures oh, and, yeah, and without their consent. Leave alone that, but there are pictures that they look for. Oh, you, there are those pictures that when they. When there is a conversation, they want to drive. Yes, they want to body shame people, and so all those things make you get internalized stigma, and if you're not careful, they exchange your eyes for their eyes, and you start seeing yourself like that. And when somebody comes and tells you, "I love you, you're beautiful," and you're like, "Excuse me." I have over 100 people on Twitter that disagree with that statement. <laughs> I have my evidence here that I'm not beautiful. What do, you, what do you want from me? And so it's very hard. You actually have like a big wall around yourself. The people have come to me and been honest with me. Like, let me tell you something. I've never had sex with someone as big as you. Can we just have, I just want that experience. And it's okay. It's, it's <laughs> yeah, somebody came, I remember somebody came up to me. It's like, ah. I'm so rude. I didn't find it rude. I don't know why. So, I mean, that's so rude. That's so demeaning. That's so disrespectful. But people are reduced to fetishes. People be like, oh my God, I don't have sex with a brown woman. I don't have sex with a pregnant woman. I don't have... It's, 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 it's a fetish. I mean, so this person walked to me. Like, they didn't even send anybody. They carried it's, themselves it's about me pleasing to me. I was like, I felt I had had sex with a fetish woman I've met, but then now I've met you. So can we... I, there's a record I'm trying to break. Can we just... I looked at the person. And I just said, respectfully, no. And so you don't know when you you don't know what to see that. Some people are curious, and because I'm, I, the sample are not bold as, as bold as that person come and say I'm curious. These people come and say I love you. Oh my God, you're beautiful. And then when you have sex with them, yeah, they're just curious. That, they're that like, ah, but now this China, you know, and they walk away from you. So relationships, I've actually think I've been. I can count like just three relationships only. Because, and relationships are those things that. So for somebody to, it takes you, them like a year or like a long time to, to convince to you that yeah. they are not after Anything Yes, else, they genuinely love and want you. Yeah. And now, when they are there, and now you start becoming, now you also like them. Remember at first you didn't like them because you thought now you like them and now every woman you're insecure. Because in your mind, you've been meant to believe every woman, as long as they're even just one kilogram less than you, they are more beautiful than you because you're ugly, because you're fat. And so it takes a lot. This person has no but peace in the home is a bit because you're very insecure and therefore you're very, you're, you, you are annoying. Let's just say, you guys, you know what it means to have a woman who is very all the time, this other person. So somehow it's, but through learning that they, made the, they wake up every morning and make the conscious choice to choose you to, it's enough for you, right? But it's not easy because, again, those things people say are at the back of your mind all the time. And even if you've made all this progress for like two years, you've been with this person for two years and you've made all this progress, you come out and tell them, they'll just find, one day find you packing your bags and they're like, what's up? I'm not beautiful. I don't know why you've been... And you're like, babe, it's been two years. You still doubt that I want to be with you after two years. But it's a constant journey of reminding and and learning and washing away what the world teaches you and sometimes when you've made all the progress you lose it and then you work with your partner to gain it again so you have to be with somebody that that's in it for for the long so, run so how often does it come your way for men to approach on that they're like can we just have sex i just want to experience this i just want to <laughs> i mean so fetishizing by the way is not restricted to fat people and um I don't have a problem with that because I believe in bodily autonomy. People have the right to do what they want to do with their bodies. Do, do you grant them access? No. Excuse me. Am I? You. I'm. I'm a human being. I'm not Candy Crush. That I'm not. But um, people that do, I I don't blame them. The people that earn money, because the sex workers that earn money because they are they are plus size sex workers, and that's 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 how they get their money. People want to experience this other side, right? So. I don't judge people that do because I speak, I stand for bodily autonomy, but as a person, I'm sorry, but I'm a demisexual. People that can only have um, sexual attraction with you if they're romantically involved with you. 
so I can't have sex with someone for because <laughs> because to satisfy your you know, not even my curiosity. If I was a curious one, it would make sense. But you're I don't know you. Some random stranger is curious, and I. Do we, well, am I am I Santa Claus? Am I giving out wishes? No. No. So what? What did you do with that guy who walked? I told him to... respectfully, no. No. Told him no. I like that they were so bold. Yeah, I, I was okay with it, by the way. Imagine he had to. Imagine if he went through the whole process of um, taking me for dinner and then like only for him to fuck me over and break my heart just because we wanted to have sex. I just love the fact he came and said, so this is the plan. Are you in? Are you not? I'm not. We are both adults. We both walk away. Yeah. It, I don't mind it. I, they say closed mouths don't get fed. So let me have your last words to the plus size people. You're beautiful. Your beauty doesn't reduce or increase because somebody else fails to see it. You are awesome the way you are. And if you ever wake up and you want to change your body, change it because you love it. That's the only way it works. But there's no wrong way to have a body. There's no, there's no way to be beautiful than to be you. Beautiful. That's all, really. And I know it's difficult. I know that the world, we're swimming in a sea of opinions. And sometimes it's, it's, it's hard to extract truth from fact. But find um, you can reach out to me if ever you need somebody to talk to. So what happens if you're changing your body because there the, are the people, you know, like for example, you're dating a man that likes fat women, then you date a man that likes small women, then you date a man that likes... Are you Ben Affleck who keeps losing weight for movies? You can't, like, <laughs> you are, you can't. So I mean, you can never satisfy... Everybody. Yeah, 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 you, get, you can never. As long as you're happy, the right people will get to the program. The right people will come around, the right friends, the right employers, the right um, people that people to love you, they will come. No. You never met him again? I didn't meet that person again and uh, I didn't meet them again. I, I was really happy that I didn't meet them again because, but by the way, everywhere that I've been employed, because I've been employed like four places late in my time, I've had like the, the most amazing bosses. There's a type, like, you know, you'd have like um, those moments when you're down and your boss tells you, you're like, oh my God, I'm so fat. Your boss is like, what? He says, yo, I buy things from you. Have you seen Americans? Like, there's a way they just, I'm so fat, but are you doing your job? Yeah, yeah are you, you're, there's this, you're excelling at your work. And so I've so really, pretty. yes. And some, and the, I love the fact that they validate it. They're like, okay, yes, the world has taught you this, but... I didn't hire you as a skinny model. I hired you as a human resource manager. So you're not doing, you're not failing at that job. If I was hiring you as a small person to do, to do like, I don't know what jobs small people do that are specifically for small people, but I'm not hiring you to do that. So why are you bothered? And so all, even my former employers, I've just really been amazed to be working with people that see beyond diversities of human beings and, and understand that abilities are not dependent on somebody's body structure. Though of course I know there are some things I can't do and I'm not applying for those jobs. Yeah. It's been an amazing episode. <laughs> it's been an amazing episode. Yeah, it has. To the plus size women, be confident. You're very beautiful. Be you. Nobody else will tell you that you're not beautiful. It's God that created all of us. So the social media trolls shouldn't harm you. Be confident. I mean, and also human beings exist in so many diversities. We can't all be the same. We can't be the same. Yeah. This is her story. See you next time. <laughs>